continue with this pain. I have to go back home. How did you know my itinerary? Oh, it's not hidden. You had already told your host about your itinerary. I'm going home. I need help. Actually, you need to get back home as quickly as possible. And I didn't come here to receive counseling from you. I came here to cancel you. Who are you? Your wife called me and reported you to me. She reported your negligence. Since you have married 19 years ago, you are always on the field. You are more on the field than being at home. So you've left her in much pain than the one you are feeling presently. Pain? What pain? Pain of the heart. Here, your finger is bleeding. But back at home, her heart is bleeding. Here, I'm having excruciating pain in your fingers. Back at home, she is having an unbearable pain in her heart. Here, a demon-possessed girl beats your finger. But back home, the devil himself is biting her heart. So you see, she carried greater pain than the one you are feeling here. But why? Why? Do you love your wife? Of course I do. Mm -mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because if you love your wife, you will feel the pain in her bleeding heart. You go about preaching from place to place without considering her feeling. You go around healing people without healing your home. Your children don't have the feeling of their father. Hmm. If you are not out of the home, preaching somewhere, you are inside the house, locking yourself inside, preparing sermons for another round of evangelical trip. <laughs> so my wife went to this extent of uh, uh, reporting me to an outsider. Since when have the issues of our home and marriage become uh, issues to be reported and discussed with a third party? She has been nagging me for being busy in ministry. She complains that I don't have time for her and the children. She complains that my ministerial invitations are too many and that they take me out of the house too often. She complains I don't have time for the children. Too many nagging and complaints. <sighs> she married me as an evangelist for God's sake. She knew me before she married me. A week after our wedding, I still went for ministrations. I must fulfill my calling. I must fulfill my ministry. And you think you can have a successful ministry without the full support of your wife? That is exactly what I am saying. This woman is not cooperating with my ministry and calling. Does she want me to sit down at home with her? Why my ministry and calling suffers? Are your calling and ministry not suffering already? You commanded a demon inside the possessed and she didn't respect your authority. She inflicted a wound upon you and made you change your schedule and you are going back home. Are your calling and ministry not being questioned? I think I need to reconsider my earlier plan. I am going ahead with my ministrations in Ilori and Port Harcourt. You can call her and tell her that I will not be back home until all my schedule for this trip is over. Or oh, until your ministry is over and your calling is ruined and you come back home in shame and disgrace. What do you mean, sir? <laughs> is this a sort of conspiracy between my wife and you? <laughs> my wife sent you here to discourage me from this ministry, isn't it? Reverend, you still don't get it, do you? When the demon you are supposed to cast out begin to cast you out. Then your staff of office is broken and your ministry is gone. So go back home and put your home in order. If your home is not in order, you do not have a ministry at all. When the love and the spirit of your wife is not inside your ministry, it becomes a gateway 
where the enemy goes in and out at will. What do you mean, sir? <laughs> the sacred word of God. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7 says, and I quote, Likewise, husband, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to your wife as a weaker vessel and as ears together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Are your prayers not being hindered already? Think about it. And I will give you another scriptural food for thought. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 28 to 29. So husband ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife, loves himself. For no one ever hated himself, but nourishes it and cherishes it, as Christ also does to the church. So, with these verses, I leave you to ruminate over your life and ministry and do what is needful before it is too late. If your finger is bleeding, our heart is bleeding too. Thank you for the counseling, sir. I am very sorry for my crude behavior towards you. Um, Reverend, are you familiar with the story of Deborah? And uh, the battle against Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army in Judges chapter 4? Yes, sir. I know that story. Deborah, the wife of Lapidus, led the war with Barak, the son of Abinoam, against Sisera, the general of Jabin's army. I preached from the story recently. Yes, I know. I know you know the story. But many people like you have missed the most important aspect of the story, the <sighs> juiciest part of that story. The role of Jael, the wife of Haba, the Kenite. Jael killed Sisera. Exactly. That is the most important aspect of the story. The enemy left the battlefront and went home to the wife of one of the soldiers of the army. Can you see what I mean? What has that got to do with me? The enemy is your fighting administration field have gone home ahead of you. So you've got to go home now as quickly as possible before it is too late. It is well with you. Thank you for your counseling. Sir, I need your phone number. I need to call you when I get back home. And please, keep praying for my family. You see, in order of priority, God is the first on the list of priority. Your home is the second. And your ministry comes last. Any attempt to misplace these priority positions will not work. I will remember your wise counsel, sir. But please, I still need your phone number. Or do I get it from my wife? I can see you are a pastor. Yes. The chief shepherd. Ah. <sighs>